Chef Brian Sal here, not your typical chef. Welcome to Pro Chef Reacts. Today I got my guest here, Guga. Yo, you, you just hijacked my <laughs> show. Uh, yes. Guga, welcome to New York. Thank you so much for making the time to come on to Pro Chef Reacts. I am so happy to be here, man. We became great friends, and uh, the fact that I'm here and having a good time with you, and I love your show, as you Thank know you. already, this is going to be awesome. We had a few slices of pizza, yes. right? Leo over there got to experience his first New York slice. Yeah, he he's a he became a new man. Let's just say that. Let's let let's get a little uh, footage of, of Leo over here sitting. Yeah, there you go. Hey, what's up? Hi, <laughs> <You> can't move. <laughs> Google, my friend. Yes. You are clearly YouTube's authority on meat cookery. Oh, boy. Specifically steaks. Yes, I, I, I've cooked one or two. <laughs> so I've dug up from the depths of the internet some uh -oh. of the most amazing steak cookery you've oh, no. ever seen. Oh, you're getting me excited because I'm always willing to learn something new. Have you ever heard of Kay's cooking? Oh, no. Have you ever heard of... Cooking with Jack. Yes, I've watched your show. <laughs> That's what we're reacting to today. I need the knowledge from the man himself. Wow, this is going to be interesting. Hi, people, and today I'm back cooking. And today I am making steak. Nice. She, she's a and lovely lady. See, she's a very sweet lady. It's like one of those ladies that, you know, is just like motherly cooking, let's yes. say. Well, I'm not sure about motherly cooking cooking but she's cooking okay <laughs> fair fair enough yeah looks like she's got a roasting pan here yeah with a uh roasting rack that's good that's good she's laying very thin steaks down i don't think she's going to be able to get a sear on those at all i don't think so as well and it's quite interesting this method that she's using i don't think i've ever used this before maybe, maybe you will now oh. after you see this i'm i'm ready to learn baby <laughs> my steak is one of them Strip types, because I'm not keen strip. on the big, thick steaks. Oh, strip type, uh, strip. So I guess thin strips is what she meant to say, because she said she's not a thick type. Oh, okay. <laughs> what does that even mean? I don't know. <laughs> All right. I, I like her. Per Whoa! What, what just happened? How did that? How was? The, how? Wait, what? <laughs> Why are you laughing? This is not a laughable situation. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> How did that happen? I it's like instant. Yo, that's faster than microwave. That's beef jerky. <laughs> Yo, that was oh. so quick. Oh my god! Uh, Look at that. Okay, I mean, did she broil it? What, I, what? I, I, I don't know. Actually, I'm not sure. Let's I look. think the steak died. Steaks are partly done. Oh. Partly done on one side. She did broil it. She did broil it. Yeah. The heat source is only at the top. Oh. The bottom has zero color. So that, you know, that you know, there was no heat source from the Brian, she's going to broil the other side too. <laughs> oh no, boy. But uh, man, this steak is uh mm, oh, okay, uh, it, okay. It's, it's a little dead. A little? <laughs> You're so nice. It's beef jerky now. Man. Okay. I forgot to mention when I do steak I wash my steak, but you don't have to, but you can if Okay, you washing your steaks. I, I I'm not a uh, uh, you know, it's not a good thing. I never wash my steak. I just usually pet it dry. Yes. Because if not, you're basically spreading bacteria all over. There's yes. no reason for you to wash your steak or your chicken right. or anything like that. Right. So I also teach that that's the best way. Right. Uh, you know, pe people always wonder that. Do I wash my meats? Well, no. You know, when the meat is processed, usually it's in a sterile environment. And like you said, by washing it, all the splashback, you are potentially spreading more bacteria, 100%. Exactly. And it's not like you're going to wash inside the steak anyway. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like not necessary. And also, particularly for steak, uh, you know, the bacteria and grows on the outside, which instantly gets killed when you cook it, so long as it's not rotten, right? Exactly, of you course. Know, if it's rotten on the outside, yes, technically, if it's big enough of a cut, you can trim it, like with a dry-aged steak, essentially. Right. And the center is still good. Or like madness, like I cooked the brisket for a month. And <laughs> do not do that, <laughs> that everybody. Like, I highly recommend you not doing that. That was like the second video I ever reacted to. Oh, really? Yeah, nah. Yeah, it was a great experience, but uh, we threw everything away. That's what you don't know. We threw the cutting board away. We threw the knife away. We threw the sous vide machine away. We threw the container away. We threw just, everything it because just, it just funked everything up yeah and and i had two crewing uh, cleaning crew come in to clean the studio because the smell wouldn't go away 
It was bad. Wow. Holy. All right, you heard it here behind the scenes uh, info from the man himself, Guga. Do not cook your brisket for a month. It won't be good. I know some meat you're not supposed to eat. Oh, eat. <laughs> not supposed to wash, but... Uh... Oh, that's fell. There Fantastic we are. flipping action. <laughs> it's great. Quick fingers. Ouch. Right, oh, now I'm going to put these back in the oven. <gasps> She's going to put it back in. She's going to put it back in, my brother. I am not wow. sure how long anything Why? wants. Like I said, I don't mm, time anything. Longer. I just keep my eye on it, check it. Uh, if it's burnt, it's burnt. If it's nice, it's nice. But I couldn't give you a time. Just keep your eye on it. That's all I can say. <laughs> I love how she's honest, though. She's you know, she's very honest. Yes. If it's burned, it's burned. But I'm going to put a little bit longer. And um, wow. She owns it. At least she's owning it. She's killing the steak twice. <laughs> right? Isn't it? <laughs> oh! As you can see, it's, it, now it's beef jerky. It's in him. <laughs> oh, wow. It, she's it's not going to eat that. There's no way. It. And that's just this. Come. That's just this own juices. <laughs> Oh it's my. soaked in. Oh my god, did you see how hard she had to push it in that knife in there? This is look at that, look at that. It is so cooked, it completely rendered out all its fat and created a pool in the middle. The steak is dead. Now, that was just the appetizer. Oh boy. Now we're reacting. I've seen you react to Jack before, so I, I have an idea of what might come. <laughs> I get asked all the time, Chef Brian, when you go home, what's your favorite thing to eat? And I always give the same answer, cereal. The childlike nostalgia just reminds me of my childhood watching Saturday morning cartoons. I genuinely love the simplicity of preparing it. Plus, it's delicious as heck. Magic Spoon is cereal reinvented. Wholesome, fueling, high quality with no artificial ingredients. 13 to 14 grams of protein, four to five grams of net carbs, and zero grams of sugar per serving. With flavors like fruity, frosted, cocoa, and peanut butter, my personal favorite, simply put, Magic Spoon is the great taste you love, but with more protein and less sugar. Click the link below to grab a variety pack and try it today. And be sure to use the promo code CHEFBRIAN at checkout to get $5 off of any order, or go to magicspoon.com slash chefbrian. Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, there is a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll give you a refund, no questions asked. Again, click the link below and use the code CHEFBRIAN or go to magicspoon.com slash chefbrian to get $5 off of your order today. It's time to start getting back into some, uh, some lessons. That's right, we've done product reviews, we've gone on field trips, we've done uh, we've done specialty uh, holiday. Now, hang on one second. So I'm assuming that right there is the steak. Mm. It's got something there, seasoning. Is that salt? I think it's salt. You know, it could be coffee creamer. It could be Wonder Flower. Who knows? We don't know. We don't see the label. But what's got me a little weirded out is there's a tape measure. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Home Depot style. <laughs> well, you know a thing or two about Home Depot and their you music. You call my music the Home Depot music. Home Depot music. Oh, 100%. boy. It's not Home Depot. <laughs> it's free YouTube music that I started from the beginning. <laughs> and uh, ever since I started, it's still there today. It's it, be, it became the charm of the channel. No, it's definitely the theme, but it sounds like Home Depot. If. It makes me want to build. It, yeah. <laughs> it makes me want to buy hammer. There you go. If I make a video and it does not have it, the complaints are too harsh for me. Really? Have you? Oh, yeah, yeah. I tried. I tried to take it out. That's I can never take it out. Out of sous vide everything, that music will live there forever. <laughs> awesome. I don't know. I may get my band to re-record that for you. Oh, if... Make it a little bit more metal. Uh, okay, do it, and I'm, I'll put I'm it on real. a video. Right. Do, it, yeah, do yeah. it. Okay. I will put it on a video. Careful what you wish for. Okay. All right, all right. You heard it here. You heard it here. I'll put it. Lost Becomes doing the next Guga theme. There you go. <laughs> oh, I went to the store... And I bought the cheapest piece of garbage they had on sale. Uh, it was $1.99 a pound. What cuts in your experience are on the one $1.99 chuck? chuck yeah, so it's something that has to do with the behind of the cow, you know, the inexpensive cuts, let's say. So essentially, the areas of the cow that are more exercised, the muscles that are utilized more are tougher and generally cheaper. And the hind legs of the cow, as well as even the front by the shoulders, those cuts are particularly tough and better for stewing, but they're cheap. And if you manipulate them, whether 
it's cutting them slight, super thin right. and tenderizing them. They can be edible in a you know high heat cooking method, but generally those cuts are better suited for low and slow. Yep, I agree. But uh, it's called what is it? Uh, select beef cross rib roast. There you go. There select you go. select. Oh, select. <laughs> So USDA has several different uh, types of gratings here in the US, unlike Japanese and other countries, but we have obviously the best, prime, then the second best, choice, and then the third, uh, not so good, is select. select. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then you actually have another one that most people are not aware of, which is called no row. Oh, no? Oh, okay. I thought it was standard. Mm, I'm not familiar with standard. Okay, okay. I'm familiar with only four. Okay. And it's called no row. It's basically what they use for other consumptions, but not... Uh, not not human, let's just say. <laughs> <laughs> so select is uh, uh, kind of tough, everybody. I'm not going to lie. So usually if you go to like even Walmart, they have choice grade. And if you dig really deep, you got to dig in deep. They might have some select in there. At Walmart, at you Walmart. have to dig deep. You have to dig deep. I so. didn't know you can dig deep at Walmart. Uh, <laughs> you, you can. Well, uh, even Wagyu Walmart has it now. Did you know? What? Yes. No way. Yes, they have Wagyu like A5. Yeah. What? Yeah. Walmart has A5. Video coming real soon, everybody. Oh, no shit. Really? Does, so does Costco. Costco, I'll, I believe. Costco has a good meat selection. I mean, every product. Protein. Right. We have a good selection, but Walmart. I Walmart think. has it. You got to dig in deep, and it's not in all Walmart. Oh. Uh, it's selected Walmarts, oh. but uh, yeah. Holy, <laughs> you learn something new every day, people. Anyway, let me show you how to do this. We're gonna do a side by side comparison. I had the butcher take a thick piece and slice it right in the middle. So we have two pieces of the same steak. Okay. Once again, I took one piece of meat, and I had the butcher slice it right down the middle. Okay. So that it would be the same cut of meat. Chuck steak. Thick ass chuck. That is yeah, going to be one of the... Yeah, no, I'm not even sure if that's the chuck steak. I think that's like... A... Actually, it is a chuck steak. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to take sea salt or, co or kosher salt. And that's a very coarse salt. And we're going to take that. We're going to cover one of them completely with sea salt. Okay. Now, the rule is this. Find out how thick your steak is. Ours is about an inch and a half. Okay. So you're gonna to have to leave this on. An inch is an hour. So an inch, inch and a half an would be an hour and a half. Have you heard this technique before? I've actually done this technique before, oh. but I, mine runs a little bit different. Okay, uh, please I, enlighten us. Yeah, I, I uh, left it a lot longer than that. And the way he's sprinkling in there, you know, as you season with uh, salt, it draws out moisture. Yep. And if you put little amount of salt, the amount that he's putting there right now, it will immediately become osmosis and come back inside. Mm -hmm. So the way I did it was you have to put a lot of salt because that way it just keeps going up mm. and it never goes back down. Ah. So the way the amount that he's putting, since right. it's so little, right. it will go up on the salt and then go back down. So if you put a lot of salt, right. you'll just keep you know, I, now, the I, So I reacted to your MSG steak video where you took a big piece and you just f***ing caked that MSG. You have to put a lot. Okay, so that was the theory. That's the idea because if you put just like a, a very thin layer, it goes back inside. It's gonna be salty as well. Yes, exactly, you don't wanna do that. So you wanna really like pack it in. So I think that's what he's trying to do right now, which is to tenderize it with salt. Right. And I'll be honest, it worked for me. Right. And, but not like that. Right. That is factual. Salt is, a te you know, it does break down the, the muscle fibers, it breaks down, breaks down the connective tissue. That is factual, but I've never done this technique before, but it makes a lot of sense what you're saying. There's just a mass quantity of salt, so it just continues to draw moisture. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Again, you gotta put, the, the, two of the ones that he's holding, two of the little cans. Oh, yes, you have to put a lot. If not, it's just gonna be extremely salty. So then in that case, you know, even though, all right, this steak is $1.99 a pound, you yes, know, two Brian, containers of worth salt. It. Yeah, it's not worth it. <laughs> no, get a tenderizer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You smash the crap out of it. <laughs> this is gonna open up the meat. Uh, it, it does something to the protein molecules. I don't know the science to it. I just know it works. And I'm just gonna show you guys right now. So we're gonna let this set for. Yeah, you're, you're, you're he's, your he's head. just salting the steak. Right. It's not enough. Right. It will right. be very salty. Okay. Okay. Well, Jack typically doesn't salt his food. Period. So I. I oh would really? Say, I, I would say this is an improvement. Oh. 
Damn, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> I can be the mean one. Okay. I, I, I know you're the nice guy. I know you're, you're the I nice say guy. it like it is, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> that is about... That's what the measuring tapes ah. for. Oh, yeah. You see, I would do it completely different. I would you you've made uh, fish baked in salt before. You know what I'm talking. So it's literally that you want to create that crust. I would do the sides, everything, the bottom. You know what I mean? I remember in your MSG video, you literally set a bed of salt uh, MSG first yeah. and put the whole on top of that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You have to. If not, it doesn't do much. I wonder if he's gonna do the other side though. It's been an hour and fifteen minutes. I guess you, you put can in the see fridge. that all the salt has. You you see the osmosis process yep, right there yep, happening? Yep, you can already see So this. if he had more salt on it, it would just keep drawing up and it would never go back down. It's really become moist. It's pulling, it's drawing all the water out of it. You can also see, if you, if we turn this, let me move this one over a little bit. If you turn this, oh, you, see? you can see yeah. like the salt, there's a lot of moisture down in there collecting. And you can see where the, the water is coming out of the steak. Just Which will happen if you put any salt on anything, right. vegetables, protein. Yeah. yeah. All right. First thing you do is rinse the entire thing of salt. Rinse there it off, go. baby. Get all the salt off. Wash that meat. And look, what you notice is, see all those openings? Look at all those groove openings. It's starting to kind of, kind of pull apart a little bit here. Yeah. Salt also breaks down, um, you know, the fat as well. So everything just becomes just like pineapple, basically. Mm -hmm. Pineapple is a lot more effective because of the bromelain. Right. But uh, salt, it works quite well as well. Right, so pineapple juice is one of the main ingredients for my bulgogi recipe, and it leads to the tenderization. Exactly, so that's why, that's why it's so delicious. By the way, I just had the sandwich. Oh, thank you. Guys, it's good. It's <laughs> real good. This has been not treated. How it kind of just... Oh, please, stop, molest the stop the molesting the meat. Okay. And look at this. <laughs> This is a lot more falling apart. You can see, you see can clearly see yeah. it. It, yeah, it, yeah. it, it okay. does work, and uh, I've done this before. Um, so yeah. He's now the color is intensified as well. I would say it's because the salt drawed out moisture, but he did run this underwater again. So I, I don't know. Usually, when you run under the water, it becomes lighter, right? The right. meat. But this one, because it was kind of salt cured, basically, that's why it's kind of darker. Okay. So yeah, it does. You can see clearly see that it's working. It's not. See that's that not camera right effect. There? The separation right in there. All these grooves. I wish he did created, it on both sides, though. Uh, it just it seems to be falling yeah. apart in my hands. Okay, these just came off the grill. Oh, it just cooked it like that. Whoa, yo, similar. that's instantaneous. <laughs> Boom. Yo, wow. What do you do? He grilled. Right, well, <laughs> let, let's let's look at this. I mean, you know, there is a slight difference between the two. Just looking at it like this right now. Um, is the one on the right still the one that is actually the salted one that's treated? my assumption and it looks lighter in color yes now that's normal because if you ever use pineapple on a steak and then you try to grill it because there's so much moisture on that steak from the pineapple and so forth it's not easy to get a sear so with salt doesn't work that usually it's the opposite right. because you draw out the moisture so but maybe it's, it's cuz he rinsed it under water. I have no idea. But even texturally it looks a little different. Right. And it looks to me at least like if you present both to me, I will pick the one on the left it looks better, right? Better yeah. sear. Yeah. Yeah, same. But it's what's in the inside that matters. Uh, okay, now I noticed while cooking these these were cooked on over their own flame. Each one had a flame underneath it on the barbecue. They were cooked identically same position, same amount of time I pulled them off. But the weird thing is, the untreated one looks like it curled up a little bit right on this end. Mm. And I don't okay. know if you can see it, but it kind of curled up and it kind of looked like it cooked, overcooked, or got well done. But look at this one right here. This one's interesting because this still, I like my steak rare. This looks rare, and this looks... Jack likes his steak rare. He likes his burgers rare. He likes his chicken rare. Wait, what? You don't know that? Chicken rare? You don't you, you don't know he be cooking chicken and still bleeding and eating it? No, yeah. he doesn't do that, Oh, Brian. my God. I wish that was the video we reacted to. Brian, Dude, are you serious? I am dead serious. He's like, oh, this is how I cook chicken, and he cuts into it. It's and bleeding, and he eats it. He's like, mmm, delicious. No. Oh, I am dead serious. He does not it's do one that. of my best videos. Oh, no, he does that for <laughs> he real? He does it for real. Wow. The I people don't know what in the say. comments call him the king of salmonella for <laughs> 
Oh, oh my God. That's that's the next video you and I are going to react to. Oh, that sounds uh, horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> it is horrifying. The one season with the salt. Cut that steak, Jack. I want to see. season with the salt. I'm going to cut right in. I'm them. curious. Oh, yeah. Nice and rare. Oh. Okay, that's beautiful. That looks great. Look hey, this does not look bad right? at all. That no. looks pretty damn good. Yeah, yeah, I'm not... No, I got to... Nothing to say hey, there. Hey, hat, hats off to Jack, you know? Like, I have no hat, but yeah, credit, Jack credit. looks great, man. <laughs> I mean, as far as like a medium rare, well, done well, which we know he doesn't do often. Here, it's done beautifully. Yeah, it looks it looks all right, at least on camera. Hey, hey look, look at that. Oh, yo, yo. Yeah. It looks good, That right? looks good. That Look at how even the coloring is yeah, there. It's like not, nothing overly cooked. I mean, uh, uh, good job. Uh, good, uh, good job, I guess. <laughs> Why'd you struggle so hard saying <laughs> yeah, that? I don't know. No, but because uh, you, you said that uh, a lot of things about Jack, and, um, you know, I'm surprised because I, it looks I, good. I'm not saying anything about Jack. Oh, I'm no. just saying... <laughs> stuff that's factual oh true facts yeah salmonella yeah. chicken i'm gonna take a piece of meat here wow i know what i'm having for dinner <laughs> there's one piece he there looks happy i want the same size here so we're gonna try this right now we let the meat set it should be perfect this is the untreated I mean he let the meat rest good seasoning wow lots of pepper <coughs> oh, so he's seasoned with other things besides salt then. He Which never he told didn't us. Show us. Yeah, he didn't yeah. tell us. Okay. It's really got a lot of flavor, but it immediately toughens up. Almost all the juice is out of it, and it's now becoming harder to chew. Now the treated one. Mmm. This is more like a New York steak. I think we've upgraded to a New York steak right here. Yeah, no, uh, no, it's not a New York Street, no. but I, 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 I've done it before, so I know it becomes more tender, but it's not that huge of an upgrade, you know? Um, it, it is an upgrade, it makes the steak better, but uh, I also think that this steak is a little bit salty. Yeah, which he's... Uh, he's not going to say. He's not going to say. No, no, no. no. Listen, it's like, uh, basically what he's doing is he's taking, you know, he's trying to polish a turd. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? That's the perfect description. <laughs> he, he's literally trying to polish a, a piece of dog shiny. It's breaking up real easy. It definitely makes a difference. I've done this before, but I had to share it with you guys. Mmm. Still chewing. I'm going to get a little late one. Still chewing. I'm going to sit down with these steaks. Continue we're chewing. We're going to have a conversation going. You guys, Can't try it out. It. Write me. Send me pictures. Tell you me I'm not lying. Still chewing. Please. All right. I'll see you on the next Cooking with Jack. Take care. Oh, he's still chewing in the end. Oh, <laughs> hey, hats out to you, uh, uh, Jack, you know, uh, because it does work. Uh, maybe the execution is a little bit different, but... Um, Listen, I've reacted to a lot of Jack's videos and I have the pro, the consultant, the meat consultant here. And clearly he, he did something right in this one. Yeah, and, and, and it was cooked right. Yeah, it was cooked very well. Yeah, I, I would eat that. Yeah. When I go visit Guga next, let me know in the comments below. Do you want me to show Guga the raw chicken? Videos? Brian, I already hate chicken. Now you're going to make me see somebody eating raw chicken? Oh, I, now I definitely want to make you watch someone eating chicken. Hey. If you guys want to see it, we're going to make it happen. We'll make it happen. Before we close out this episode, I do want to say thank you to all of my amazing patrons. Guys, thank you so much for your support. And remember, for the rest of you, by becoming a patron, you get to take advantage of some awesome perks like early access to new episodes, uncensored extended versions of certain episodes, and most importantly, patron exclusive content. I want to tell you about my mailing list that I've just started so you can keep up with all things Chef Brian Sal. You get updates on the latest and greatest, but more importantly, Importantly, generally, it's a sneak peek of what's to come that I don't plug right away on the channel. For example, those on the mailing list got to know about my new channel, Chef Brian Sal Raw, first. Plus, you'll get exclusive offers like maybe some upcoming collab merch with maybe somebody named Frenchie. Most importantly, your data is safe. It is not being used for anything else except for updates about this channel and what I got going on. Be sure to visit the link in the description below and sign up to the mailing list today. Guga, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you, show. brother. You are, as I said, and I mean it, friends for life. Thank you for having me. Appreciate you, man. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. And remember, don't be afraid to fail because it can only make you stronger. And with that said, I am Chef Brian Sow, and he is... Guga. We'll see you really soon. Take care, everybody. Say bye to the wide cam behind you. Hey, wake uh... up!